What's going on guys? Welcome or welcome back to our 21 part guide for the FTC characters. Like I did say, you guys did not hear me wrong, there's going to be 21 videos breaking down almost every single aspect of Ken, Terry, and Ryu. So make sure you stick around or just watch whichever character you main, but I promise you it's going to be definitely worth the watch. I placed top 40 in my state, Georgia, which is like a really stacked region for my first year of playing competitive Smash. So I think I know what I'm doing a little bit with these characters and I can definitely got, give you guys information. My past channel was full of guides like this and I wanted to be able to recreate them and update you guys on how to get better at these characters. So stick around and I hope you guys enjoy. Welcome to part three of our 21 part guide. Today we're gonna go over Terry's moveset. This is gonna be the last part of the moveset portion. After that, we're gonna get into more gameplay specific stuff. So stay tuned and let's get right into it. Now, if you want to play Terry, you have to know that Terry does have some unique things about his character kit. What makes Terry different from most characters in this game? Well, Terry, one, he has a charge recovery that makes him invincible. He has auto turnaround. He has the ability to cancel his specials. And at 100%, Terry unlocks Go, which allows him to have two supers as his specials. It's a pretty broken comeback mechanic that does not wear off until Terry loses his stock, but honestly it has its drawbacks but if you know how to use this character properly they're very explosive and they can really steal you games so before we begin the guide i'm going to show you guys a little bit of a montage where i'm going to show my terry's gameplay that we have more of an idea of how this character works how i abuse auto turnaround the ability to cancel my normals into specials and abuse go i want you guys to look closely and understand how i play the character because i play terry a lot different from most terry players and I want to be able to pass on my playstyle so you guys can absorb that information and make your own kind of playstyle with them and probably push it forwards. Next up we have Terry's jabs 1, 2, and 3. Now the cool thing about this move is that jab 2 has 2 hits. This allows Terry to know if you hit his opponent or hit their shield and it also gives you enough time to do your special cancels. Now all of that aside though, let's focus on jab 3. I love the part about jab 3 because Terry finishes off with a kick. Now because most people expect Terry to cancel on people's shield, you can delay the kick on whether or not you want to use it or not. One thing I forgot to mention is that with Terry's jabs, all you have to do is hold the A button and Terry will continue to just jab, jab 1, not even go into jab 2 or 3. Let's continue to do jab one. So if your opponent does walk in on it, you can immediately cancel off of that move. It's really good to use. It's very reliable because it's just that fast of a move. Next up we have Terry's F tilt. The entire leg on this move is invincible. This move itself is so good for comboing and doing a lot of percent. It does 15% on its own and it can also be canceled into specials. It's really good at early percents and mid percents for getting kill confirms and combos. So Keep this in mind, it's really good for trying to also combat other moves since the leg is invincible so you can try to stick it out and you know try to beat out other attacks. It's such a good move to use in your neutral, make sure you use it a lot guys. Terry may need to abuse this move, it's so good. 
Next up we have Terry's up tilt. I personally don't use this move a lot because I only go for it whenever I have power geyser, but there are ways you can mix it up and use it in your gameplay. Personally for me, I don't really like it that much because of the fact that it has a lot of end lag, but if you do connect that hit, it's so good in neutral guys. So make sure you keep that move in your back pocket if you want to play like me. Otherwise, find your own use for it. I personally only use it for power geyser or from pressuring people's shields. I really don't find too many uses for this move. Alright, so next up we have Terry's down tilt. This is one of Terry's best moves in neutral because of the fact that it ledge traps, it combos, it does strings, and it also adds a lot of pressure onto your opponent when it's comboed into the auto turnaround mechanic of Terry's kit. Personally for me, if I want to stay on the ground, this is definitely my go-to move. It does so much pressure on the ground, covers up so many options, and I love using it at ledge because of the fact that if you two frame or catch somebody re-grabbing ledge, you can just spam it because of the angle it sends your opponent into. It pops, it sends them upwards, so as you continue to spam it, it brings them above the stage and then you can combo cancel, you know, into a special off of it. So abuse this move more and you'll definitely see the results and piss off your opponent. Terry's dash attack. I love going for this move because one is a kill move and it also crosses up people's shield. And the cool thing about crossing up people's shield in this game is that we have auto turnaround. So if I cross up somebody's shield, my next option, I really don't have to turn my character around. I can just mash my fastest option. So let's say I go for a dash attack, right? I'll usually dash attack people and if they do shield, I'm immediately holding the A button so I can get a jab out of it. And once I start getting that jab, I'll try to cancel into a different move from there because I can already do a move on them if they don't have a, you know, a good out of shield option. I can already do a move on them and get kills off of them because of that because of the fact that I'm already turned around and I already have a quick enough move so during the time that they're dropping shield or trying to jump out, I'm already acting. So keep that in mind. This move is very useful but you want to save it for times where you just want that quick burst option that will throw your opponent off, especially at ledge. It has such a good linger box where if you react, your opponents get up at a perfect time. Even when it's not perfect, you can still get the sweet spot and get kills off of it. Next up, we have Terry's F Smash. The cool thing about Terry's F Smash is the fact that Terry leaps forward into his opponent when he does the kick. That way, he covers up so much distance with this powerful smash attack. Personally for me, I like the fact that he covers distance with the smash attack because a lot of times in this game, I feel like I'm not fast enough to get to my opponent to get a punish. But Terry can just leap there, cover that option up for me, and then throw out a really strong move in that situation. Now, it does have a weakness because of the fact that he jumps and, you know, a lot of characters in this game can pancake and duck underneath stuff. This is one of those moves that is kind of um, a victim in that situation. So you want to be careful and punish things accordingly and smart because you don't want to just throw out an F smash and get punished for it because your move just whiffed. Next up we have Terry's up smash. Now I love Terry's up smash because of the fact that this move is so fast and so strong that if my opponent ever touches my shield at late percent or, I, or if I parry, all I have to do is do a quick up smash and kill him off like that. It's easy. I don't have to do any combo cancels or anything. Just throw out that up smash and kill my opponent quickly. It's really good for mid stage and you can't really get that kill off the side blast zones. Just go for a quick up smash and get your opponent out of there. More people need to use Terry's up smash especially because of the fact that around frame one and two, Terry ducks before he starts it up and then comes up with a strong attack immediately. It's so useful guys, so please implement this into your gameplay. Up smash out of shield guys. As if you're Cloud, up smash out of shield. This move is so good. Next up with Terry's down smash. I don't like the smash attack too much because of the fact that when you down smash, he has this weird angle where I can't even use it to two frame. He kind of kicks upwards into the air like in a little upward angle. Um, while he leans down but the cool thing about this down smash is let's say I up smash somebody's shield right there's something in this game called shield pushback so if I hit somebody's shield they're gonna slide back a little bit and most characters can't reach me with a grab right if I do an up smash so I'll immediately mash a down smash to punish their grab or to hit you know to shield poke them or to add more damage onto their shield it's a really cool thing to go for after you missed or failed an attempt to up smash your opponent and you hit their shield so Keep that in mind, it's a really cool mix up that I came up with and thought of just to cover up my tracks of missing an attack. But other than that, I really wouldn't say I use down smash too much. It's really not all that. Unless I cast my opponent at ledge and I know they're going to miss the ledge or if I know they're going to regular get up, I don't ever go for down smash. Next up we have Terry's Nair, which is one of the most busted moves that Terry has in the air in my opinion because of the fact that his Nair 
is so disjointed that it can beat out so many moves in this game or at least compete with others in this game and I personally love to use it as a, as a landing option because of the fact that I can just press Nair and land and probably trade with something and make it back to the stage instead of trying to get you know comboed because unlike Ryu and Ken, Terry doesn't have like focus attack or anything so you have to get creative or sometimes try to force your way into neutral and Nair is definitely a good way to do that because of the disjoint on his hand. The cool thing about Nair is it's so good for catching in jump-ins because it's disjointed guys so you can beat out a lot of moves on their startup because our Nair is so fast so all you have to do is rising Nair, catch somebody when they're trying to jump in, hit you with an attack. You can use it when landing. Nair combos into itself. Nair is such a good move because if you catch somebody's jump or you're comboing with Nair, you can end it with like a burn knuckle or a power dunk. You can cancel the move in the air into a combo extender. So keep that in mind. Make sure you abuse this move in neutral when you know your opponent's jumping in on you a lot. Just go ahead and throw out a Nair out there to stop them. Terry's fair is a weird move. Um, you can't cancel it, but it has this really weird angle where he just sticks his leg out on his opponent and keeps his body back, right? So he puts a little hitbox out there while he leans the rest of his body back. And honestly, at first I thought this move was really awkward, but I kind of like it now. It keeps Terry away from your opponent while also sticking a really good hitbox out there that Terry can't combo off of depending on what percent your opponent's on. You can use it to land, you can use it to like jump in on your opponent. It's honestly, in my opinion, is really good when trying to poke at your opponent, mess around and see if you're going to land a hit or not because it's just that safe of a move that lingers out there and once you stick it out there, your opponent really can't like jump out a shield or anything because there's an active hitbox staying in their face. I've watched Riddle's gameplay. Riddle use, uses fair, rising fair a lot. He rising fares into like, you know, F tilt or whatever. Personally for me, I don't do that too much, but I definitely do want to incorporate incorporate that a lot into my gameplay. So I definitely suggest that you guys use fair more in your gameplay, but don't spam it, obviously. You want to use it in the smart situations where you want to poke at your opponent and find out if they're going to pick an option and see if you're going to hit them or not. If you guys ever played Street Fighter, it's basically one of your poking tools. It's not something you want to keep spamming too much, it's just to check your opponent and if it works, you can extend off of it. Next up we have Terry's back air, um, this move is trash, but you know, it, it, it still kills, right? But it has so much startup, and it's so flimsy and awkward that I honestly just never go for it unless I know I can just land it as a kill move to get my opponent out of there. Otherwise, I just don't go for it. I just, I really don't like this move whatsoever. Like you can see in this clip right here where I try to back air him and it misses on rising because it has just that much startup lag. And it's just weird. I, I personally just don't like this move at all. The hitbox doesn't linger enough for me either. Uh, you can't cancel it or anything. Per like I hope they do change Terry to let him cancel his back air because this move is just not that good on its own. It's kind of bad. Next up we have Terry's up air. I personally really love this move because of the fact that you can cancel it into like rising tackle if you do confirm it. It covers up so many options on platforms. It combos into itself. It leads into so many cool go confirms at later percents for Terry. This move, honestly in my opinion, it just does so much for Terry and I think a lot of people should use this more. I personally don't use it a lot like I want to. But I feel like once you know once offline comes back and everything, I can be able to react and use it a lot more and spam it. But I really do think this is one of Terry's best moves when your opponent's above you because you can just confirm and see if you attack your opponent and then go into rising tackle. You can add enough pressure onto them. It has like no lag when landing, so it's really it's really a good move to throw out there just to check and see if you can hit your opponent or not. Next up, we have Terry's down air. Personally, for me, I know this is kind of weird, but I think Terry's down air is his first best move or his second best move. But hear me out. Terry's downer does amazing shield pressure. It can be canceled. It has almost no landing lag. It's so good for switching up at ledge to go for like dare, nair, dare, nair, back and forth because the move has like no lag whatsoever. It can combo into itself, combo into other areas that Terry has. Lead up into shield poke confirms. It's just busted. It even kills like 30%, guys. It's, a, it's just that good, man. The move is just that good and it does everything I need right there for me. Where a lot of Terriers will try to go for a lot of grounded mixes on people's shields or whatever, I would just run up and down on somebody's shield and then see where they go from there. Because that move just does so much pressure on its own that is unreal. I generally think that most, more Terriers need to abuse this move in their neutral and try to find ways to scare their opponent with this move because you can you can down their crack shoot and crack shoot shield pokes. You can down air burn knuckle. You can down air power dunk, which also shield pokes. It's so many good options, especially because power dunk is freaking invincible. So many good options from this move, guys, and neutral. Just try using it more. 
and see how you guys feel about it. For me, I love spamming this move and my neutral just brings so much fear into my opponent. Alright, so next up we have Power Wave. The cool thing about Power Wave is this projectile slides across the entire stage while sticking onto the ground. So usually once Power Wave is in play, my opponent has to pick an option, and that's what makes it such a good tool in Terry's kit. Now Power Wave has two variations. The light variation is a slow traveling Power Wave, and the heavy variation is a fast traveling Power Wave. Now as a Terry main, you're going to have to learn to mix it up between light and heavy, that way your opponent is thrown off by the timing, that way you always have an upper hand on confusing how your opponent reacts to this move. Lastly, Power Wave has an aerial variation where it just does a burst of flames in front of Terry. It has pretty good knockback and I love using it as an edge guard tool because it's kind of funny and it sends your opponent into a really weird angle. So keep that in mind if you want to edge guard your opponent and throw out a really big hitbox, just go ahead and throw out an aerial Power Wave. Next up we have Burn Knuckle. This is one of Terry's best burst options because of the fact that it does so much damage, it's so quick, and it literally is a kill move at ledge. And when I say this is a kill move, this move kills like 80-90% depending on how much rage you have. It's just that good of a move and you can confirm it out of down tilt, you can confirm it out of nair, you can confirm it out of dare, you can confirm it out of so many things guys. This move is so good for racking up damage and stealing stocks from your opponent. The damage output on the light and heavy variations are pretty much similar. What differs between them though is the startup frames. The light variation of Burn Knuckle has less startup frames but travels less of a distance and the heavy variation has more startup frames and travels a further distance and their knockback outputs clearly the heavy version has stronger knockback. So if you want to go for down tilt Burn Knuckle you have to go for the light variation because the heavy variation has too much startup frames where your opponent can escape the attack and it won't be a true combo. But if you go for the light variation, it will be a true combo. And trust me, even though it's the light variation, it still has incredible knockback at ledge. Next up, we have Crack Shoot. Terry basically does a front flip into his opponent and sends them upwards into the air if you do land the attack. I love Crack Shoot because one, the angle it sends your opponent into is so good for juggling. And I also love it as a burst option because it's really good for crossing up people's shield from almost anywhere on stage. It's so good for shield poking. It's just that move you want to use where things get really awkward and neutral and you want to throw your opponent off. You're just throwing a crack shoot and they're definitely going to be like, okay, this guy is weird. You know, he's, he's always going to keep me in check no matter where I am on stage. And I really love that about the move. Now, Crackshoot has the light variation and the heavy variation. Unlike Burn Knuckle, it really isn't that specific on whether or not you want to use the light or the heavy variation of Crackshoot. Like, the situations really don't matter. Personally, for me, I go for a heavy Crackshoot whenever I'm comboing. And if I just want to reach my opponent, I go for a heavy Crackshoot. Otherwise, I'll probably only use light Crackshoot as a recovery mix up. I personally don't see any other reason to go for light Crackshoot except for other advanced tech that I'll talk about later on with Terry. But that aside, usually just go for a heavy Crackshoot for now until I explain to you why light Crackshoot is kind of cool. Next up, we have Terry's Rising Tackle. This is Terry's upbeat, his recovery move. And the cool thing about his recovery move is it has a charge function. So in order to do Rising Tackle, you have to either press up B like you normally would most characters. But if you want to do the charge variation, you have to hold down, charge it while you're holding down, and then flick up and press A, and then you get the charge variation. All the inputs are in the game. So go over to your the training mode, hit the move list, and everything will be there for you. So Terry's specials, they have a light and heavy variation, correct? However, Rising Tackle has a light and heavy variation along with a light and heavy variation for the charged version. So you have non-charged Rising Tackle, light and heavy, and then you have charged Rising Tackle, light and heavy, which makes four different variations of Rising Tackle. Light Rising Tackle for the charge and non charge basically sends Terry a short distance upwards, not really as far as heavy Rising Tackle would. Heavy Rising Tackle is the one that sends Terry very high up. But the cool thing about the input variations of Rising Tackle, the charge variations of Rising Tackle is they offer Terry full body invincibility. Now you know when you did the charge right when Terry is glowing blue. So whenever you're recovering, I highly advise you always do the input Rising Tackle because you want to be invincible. Now the full body invincibility does not last throughout the entire move. It, it starts up with full body invincibility. As he rises up, he loses it. However, he keeps invincibility on his toes. And that's good because if you don't want to get too framed, you're going to want to aim for his toes to hit the legs. That way you snap the stage and the last thing that was remaining of you that wasn't touching the stage were your invincible legs. That way it's almost impossible to get an easy two frame on Terry. Now with all the recovery stuff aside, I do love going for Rising Tackle as a kill confirm because of the fact that if I just spam jab 
and cancel into Rising Tackle, that's one of the most brain dead confirms you can get in this game. It kills as early as like 120% because Rising Tackle does like 20% on its own, then you have the jabs added to it, so as Terry carries them up, they add on so much percent that he just blows them up in the skies for it. You can use Charge Rising Tackle out of shield, if you just hold your shield button and slightly hold down, you can charge it while being in shield, and after that you're just going to do an up out of shield like you will with most other characters in this game. It's not that hard of a concept, you are going to have to practice it because most times in this game, you can just recklessly do an up out of shield regardless of the sensitivity, but with Terry, you want to practice being sensitive while holding down, so that way you don't do a spot dodge, okay? You want to slightly hold down, and then you flick up and do the up out of shield, which is so good with Terry. Um, we like to call that mechanic turtling, because you hold a spot in neutral where you're just sitting down, and if your opponent decides to touch your shield or jump above you, you put an active invincible hitbox that goes straight up and creates a straight line of death. Next up we have Power Dung, the move that everyone loves to spam with Terry, except for me. I actually don't like this move that much when I'm going for kill confirms. Hear me out. Before we even get into talking about this move, I want you guys to note that in competitive levels of play, your opponent can SDI Power Dunk and make this move virtually useless if you don't know what you're doing. Now how do you come up with a way to make sure that this move is useful? Just use it less so they're not expecting it as often. Now Power Dunk has four different variations, but we're going to talk about the command variations, which makes it two variations, the light input and the heavy input. Now on the start of a Power Dunk, it is invincible, so you can use this move to combat other attacks that are coming at Terry. You can use it to try to beat out stuff when you're recovering and whatnot, but I want to get to the cool things about light and heavy Power Dunk, which happens on the descent. So when you do light Power Dunk, Terry goes up and comes down a lot quicker than he would with heavy Power Dunk. With heavy Power Dunk, there's a huge dramatic pause before he comes down and punches, right? And that makes a big difference when you're comboing your opponent. If your opponent's SD on your power dunks and you still want to go for power dunk a lot, just go for a light power dunk. Almost 9 times out of 10, they're not going to fall out of it. Light power dunk is just so fast that it's really hard to fall out unless your opponent's SD on perfectly. Another cool thing about light power dunk is when you're recovering, you can control the angle you descend at. So Terry rises up for the first half of power dunk. And then once he goes in for the first step, he's going to shoot down. And once he shoots down, you can hold forward or back and choose whichever angle you want Terry to fly at. You can't really have this kind of influence with heavy power dunk because of the fact that the angle you go for after you descend is literally locked. You can't influence that whatsoever. But here's the trade-off. If you do heavy power dunk, it does have a spike hitbox that light power dunk does not have. So if your opponent is caught lacking in the air and they get hit by your power dunk, they will get spiked. Now only works with heavy power dunk. So that's the trade-off for the ability to not be able to control yourself in the air. You can also spike your opponent. So if your opponent's trying to edge guard you, you can try to mix things up and reverse edge guard them and take their stock for it. Because heavy power dunk spike is so powerful that it just robs stocks probably as early as 30%. It's just that strong, especially if you have rage, it just takes your opponent's stock, especially if they don't even have their jump. It's just that good of a move, but you have to know how to angle it and snipe your opponent out of the air. It takes practice. You have to learn the angle, you have to learn how people are going to edge guard you and line everything up, do the math, and just snipe them out the air and steal their stock and just enjoy the feeling of just completely robbing your opponent. Now before we move on, I did gas up Power Dunk a lot, but listen to me guys. This move 1, it's laggy, the angle it sends you in, predictable, like the entire animation takes a minute so people can see where you're doing it. It's not the best move to just mash. A lot of Terry mains mash this move so hard and it's so obvious and so easy to beat them because they rely on that move so much. I personally only use this move as a last resort or I use it as a mix up tool. You know, it's something I'm not gonna, it, most Terry's like to use it as their main neutral tool, but I use it as a mix up tool. I keep it in my back pocket and bring it out here and there because one, it kills, it's a kill move. And if my opponent's not expecting it, then I can make it more consistent and use it a lot more in my kit and expect it to work instead of just throwing it out, seeing it, seeing it not work and seeing it work randomly, you know? I want to make sure that when I use it, it definitely will work in those situations. And one more thing to note is heavy power dunk and light power dunk do about the same amount of percent. So you don't have to do the heavy variation when you're going for combos. You just go for the light variation and it does the percent for you. The only thing different is the knockback. So please go for light power dunk more if you're just trying to go for combos. Next up, we have Terry's Go Moves, man. So Terry has two Go Moves, and I love these moves because they look so cool, they look so fun, they're so busted to land on my opponent, and makes me feel so satisfied when I land them. So with Terry's Go, first you have Power Geyser, and then you have Buster Wolf. Now in order to lock Go, you have to hit 100.0%, alright, on the dot. 
And once you hit that threshold, you keep go until you lose your stock. That means you can mash as many go moves as you want and you still won't lose the comeback mechanic. Now, I said mash, but the thing is, you don't want to mash these moves because they have so much end lag. But let's say your opponent shields and you want to mash these go moves, they're just not going to work because one, they don't do much shield damage on their own, and they're also very easy to punish because of how long your character is still in an animation after the move has been done. So first we're going to talk about Buster Wolf. Buster Wolf looks like a command grab, but it's really not a command grab because you can't grab somebody out of their shield. What it's good for is it grabs my opponent and puts him into the proper spot to get hit by the rest of the move, which I personally love because of the fact that it makes it more consistent, you know? Another cool thing about Buster Wolf is the fact that Buster Wolf has heavy armor. So you can be able to go through a lot of projectiles in this game and ignore them and just reach your opponent. If you know they're going to shoot something in front of you, just do a raw Buster Wolf, go through the projectile and hit them for it. It's so good at keeping your opponent in check and making sure that they don't just do whatever they want once they got you into this comeback threshold. It allows Terry to hold neutral and hold onto this stock as tightly as he can and try to rob his opponent's stock before he loses his. Now just to mention, Buster Wolf can be cancelled into. Just like every other special that Terry has, Buster Wolf can be used just like every other special. So you can down to Buster Wolf, you can F to Buster Wolf, you can jab Buster Wolf. But the only thing is, both of Terry's go moves cannot be used in the air. They can only be used when Terry's grounded. Therefore, it's a way to balance Terry so he doesn't always have access to these comeback moves. He can only use them when he has advantage or he neutral is in the zero position where nothing is really happening. Both characters are still grounded. They still have full control of what's going on in the map. Next up, we have Power Geyser. I love this move because you can use it as an anti-air. Keeps my opponent from just jumping and spamming attacks in the air. It's a huge hitbox. It's so good for lead trapping. You can use the two frame. Man, Power Geyser just does so much. And my favorite thing about Power Geyser the most, if I were to pick something, is the fact that it has Shield Break Confirms. Now, I really wouldn't call them Confirms because they're not true, but Go has this fear factor where my opponent isn't able to react or pick options quick enough because they're so scared to just mash buttons because this move will blow them up. So they're going to be conservative and not really react to things as quickly as they usually would because they're scared of you. And I like to call it a confirm, a fear confirm, if I will. Because if I know I'm in my opponent's head, I know it's going to work. Next up, we have Terry's throws. Terry's forward throw is just for positional advantage, but there's something cool you can do with his forward throw that's kind of cheesy. If you throw your opponent with a forward throw at ledge and they jump after it, you can go for a power dunk spike and, you know, it's rob their stock like that. But that's really all I'll ever use it for, just to check my opponent and see if they jump out of hit stun. That's it. I really don't use that move for any like strings or anything. I just like to use it for positional advantage or just to check if my opponent is going to jump, you know? That's it. That's simply all it's good for. Same thing with back though, it's just for positioning and I can try to scrub check my opponent and see if they're going to jump out of disadvantage once again. Um, that's all those moves are for, the back and forward throw, just positional stuff and scrub checking. What's really important is Terry's down throw. Terry's down throw, you can use it at early percent to get up there, rising tackle confirms, which are so easy to pull off. It's a true combo. It's like free 30 to 40 percent depending on how you lead into the combo. It's honestly completely brain dead. Now the way people DI your down throw though is they DI towards Terry and if they do that you can go for Terry's up throw and the DI on Terry's up throw you would be required to DI away. So if your opponent doesn't react fast enough you can just up throw and then rise and tackle from there if they're trying to do the proper DI for down throw. So it's a 50-50, you have your opponent off guard and you still get your 30-40% for free off of that. Next up we have a very unique ability that only Terry has called a spot dodge cancel attack where they implemented an attack into Terry's kit where if he spot dodges and presses A, he gets an upper body invincible attack where he can counter attack on his opponent, ignore whatever you know attack they were doing, pop them up into the air. Now the cool thing about this move is you can actually combo out of it into like an up air rising tackle. Which is going to take you a lot of practice. I'm not going to show you guys in this video because it's just a moveset guide. But keep in mind that you can combo off of this. You can even combo into up tilt at low percent. So you can like do things like spot dodge cancel attack, up tilt, into power geyser or rising tackle or different moves. There's just so many things to pick from there guys to be honest. I love mixing it up with this ability because if my opponent tries to punish me, I'll just throw out a quick spot dodge cancel attack and completely reverse whatever disadvantage I was in. Alright everyone, we finally reached the end of this Terry moveset guide. I did not intend for this guy to be almost 30 minutes long. To be honest, I hugely underestimated Terry. I thought this character was not as complex as Ken and Ryu, so I thought this guy would be so much easier to just breeze through and get through with the character and talk about all of this stuff. But 
Turns out he's way more complex than I thought he was, and I'm glad I was able to notice that myself. And I'm also glad I was able to deliver that information a lot easier than I thought it would be after realizing how long it took to get through this entire guide. Now if you did make it this far into the guide, I really do thank you because this guide was extremely hard to make for me. There was just so much information, there's so much stuff to clip up because I didn't know what I wanted to keep. I didn't know what I wanted to throw away. But at the end of the day, it worked out and I'm glad it came out to work this way that it did. With all that being said, I need to hurry up and shut up and end this video quickly. But I really do appreciate every single one of you guys who are sticking around for these guides, watching everything, learning from these characters. I do appreciate that y'all are watching my hard work. It really helps me feel like what I'm doing is worth it. And I hope that you guys stick around to watch the rest of my guides. So go ahead and hit that like, comment, and subscribe button. And make sure you hit that bell icon if you want to be able to get notified when I upload a video immediately. It really does mean a lot for my views to spike up as soon as I upload something. It means people are desperately waiting to see my content, which I really do enjoy because it makes you want to desperately go back into the, you know, editing and make more content out there for you guys. So. It's really good to you know feel that receiving end of me being a content creator and yeah that's all i want to talk about thank you guys for watching and i'll catch you guys later